Just like you guys out there right now. <laughs> See? That's the way, that's the way the early church operated. That's the way they rolled. Are you catching my drift? I mean, they had something that people recognized was different. They saw something that made them wonder, what is this? We've never seen anything like this before. And what it was, it was the impartation of the Holy Ghost in people's lives that were believers. It was the fullness of the joy and peace and love of God radiating through their lives. And they came down into the streets of Jerusalem and Peter began to declare, this is that. This is that life flow that the Lord said he would give. He said, I was going to give you life that would pull existence of life off the charts that you cannot have apart from me. And then that 28th verse, he said, you've made known to me the ways of life. You shall make me full of joy with your presence. Amen. You will make me full of joy in your presence. So this is the way they are operating. This is the way they were rolling. And the question has to come into our minds. Is this fire of fervor of the early church revealed here in this uh, book of Acts chapter 2? Is this the norm for the church today? Think about that. This is what God initiated. He said, I'm going to breathe on you and you're going to receive my life flow in you. I believe Jesus was the happiest person in the earth. I believe that Jesus walked in a way that was always content and at peace and caused people to look at him and wonder what it was that caused him to operate the way he did. And this is what the church received on the day of Pentecost. And the question has to be answered by the church. Is this the norm? <clears throat> it's the way God started it, isn't it? Yeah. It's the way it was the original intent of God that he would have a purpose and a plan for his church. And it would be, I'm going to empower them. I'm going to infuse them. I'm going to fill them up with my glory by putting my spirit in them. Ooh, that's shouting the church right there. I'm going to put my spirit in them. And is this the norm for the church today? If it is not, I believe it should be. Because Jesus said this. John 10.10, 10, he said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Verse 41 says this. Then they which gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord begins to bring revelation to you and I today. Amen. This is the norm. There is something that God initiated. Amen. On the day of Pentecost was the day that God birthed his church. This was the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus was explaining to Peter, James, and John and the other disciples that followed his life. He said, I'm going to show you the way of life, and once you understand my way, you go into Jerusalem and wait, because it's going to be topped off by filling you up with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. 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 And so this is the way. This is the norm for the church. But here's the thing, is that it is God that initiates the life. Yeah. Do you understand that? It is God that initiates our eternal life. It is God that started 
the fire on the day of Pentecost, cloven tongues of fire came down on them from heaven. It was God that initiated the light, and as the believer, it is you and I that must maintain it. There's one thing to start a fire. It's another thing to keep the fire burning. Amen. Amen. And the revelation is, is that we as believers that are wanting to live this life that is the abundant life must understand that it is becomes incumbent upon us to maintain the fire, to keep the fire burning, to fan the flames and make sure my zeal my joy, my love, my peace overflowing does not wane, does not go out. Have I got a witness in the house of God today? Amen. Amen. And so the Lord qualifies it. He shows us that there is a choice to be made. And that choice that is to be made in our life, if we're, if we're to live the best life, it's a choice that we must make every single day. God does not live our life for us. Are you hearing me? God does not live our life for us. He's made a way for our life. But then he says, now you go and live your life to the fullest. Yeah. Amen. God wants us to live the best life. So he qualifies it in John 10, 10. And he says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's our problem. That's our, that's our battle. That's where we need to have discernment and understanding and wisdom of what we're going to do. Every day that we wake up, every day that God gives us on this side of heaven is an opportunity to rise up and live the day to the fullest. Yes. And it becomes a choice. Yes. Oh, yes, it does. Yes. Thank you very much. It becomes a choice. We can wake up and we can say, good, Lord, uh, good morning, Lord. Or we can wake up and we can say, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> it becomes a conscious choice. It becomes an attitude. It becomes a recognition that God has placed in me the ability to live a life above the norm. That God says, I, will, I can live a life that is an abundant life. I can live a life that has peace overflowing. Because it's from God. It's not from the world. And the thing about it is this, is that the life that God is expressing to us is from the inside out, not from the outside in. The abundant life that God offers is not contingent upon my circumstances. Amen. It's based on an experience in God. So he gives us three things to be aware of every day that we live. He says, a thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The word steal there, very interesting. The Greek word klepto. <laughs> the thief is busy in opposing you from living the best life. Amen. And just as God will never give up loving you, the enemy of your soul will never give up trying to bring you down. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. The, the Lord begins to show a distinction. He begins to set apart the difference. He says we can live the best life or we can live just the average or maybe even a not so average life. We've got to make a choice. We've got to understand the choice is here. And he says, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To steal means to take away by theft, or to steal away by stealth. Interesting word there. Stealth is secretive. It's sneaky. You know, it kind of sneaks up on you. And we've got to be aware of our surroundings and what's going on around our life. God wants his church to know that we need to have discernment and recognize what's really happening. Yeah. All through the Word of God, we find that there's a struggle against us living the life that God wants for us to live. God wants you to live in victory. God wants you to live an overcoming life. God wants His people to be happy. And our happiness is not contingent upon those things that are going wrong in our life. It's contingent upon the person that
that we know in our life. Yeah. Right. Oh, if you could just grab a hold of that one truth right there and leave the church with that, I've helped you today. Amen. Praise God. Our peace, our joy, our love cannot be bought, cannot be worked for, cannot be found. Amen. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. And amen. All of hell and this world and everything, uh, circumstances can come against our lives, but it can never rip off Jesus from us as long as we hold on. Amen. 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 The enemy will begin to bring circumstances and problems, you know, uh, financial collapse and calamity and things going wrong and try to get our eyes on those things. Yeah. Try to get our eyes on that stuff and when we get our eyes on other things that are going wrong, it will bring us down. The thief comes in stealthily and he begins to say, look at this, this is going wrong here and this isn't happening over there and if God really loved you, then why did this happen? And begin to quite a question us to get our eyes on those things because he's trying to bring us down. Isn't that what Jesus told Peter? He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But be encouraged because I have prayed for you. And after you are converted, strengthen your brethren. God is showing us today that our life of living is a, the best life. God's intention and plan and desire for you today is to live a victorious, overcoming, happy, peace-filled, joy-filled life in God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we need to be, uh, we need to be understanding and, and be, uh, have, a, have, a, have a mind, praise God, that has discernment on what is really happening in our life. Circumstances happen to us. Things go wrong in our lives. That was, that was the lie of the enemy against Job. Oh, he, he praises you and he'll bless your name and he'll live for you as long as everything is going good. Amen. There's a lot of people like that in, in church. I don't want to start meddling here, but boy, you see it all the time. As long as everything is going good, as long as I've got a job, as long as I've got a car, as long as I've, you know, I, I, I've got good things happen to me, I can lift my hand and praise the Lord and be happy in my soul. But let all that stuff turn around against my life and I won't show up for church. I'll tuck my head and bow my shoulders and start crying, poor, poor, pitiful me, because my life isn't strong enough to realize that those things don't matter. Only God matters. Amen. The old songwriter said, take this whole world, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Yes. He had an understanding in his life that things don't matter. Amen. It's not that God doesn't desire for us to have good things, but he said this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added unto you. It's a matter of principle. It's a matter of understanding that God is my maker, that Jesus is my savior, that the Holy Spirit is my guide, and I will look to him as the author and finisher of my faith. Keep my eyes on Jesus, praise God, then everything else has to come into line. It may not be on the day or the time that I think it's going to happen, but bless your little keep picking heart today, and it will happen. The enemy wants to steal, to kill. To kill means to sacrifice. It means to give over to. Praise God. You've got to know today, amen, that the devil can't beat you. Amen. The circumstances magnify themselves against your life, and we start shrinking back, and we start saying, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. You have just formed an agreement with the enemy of your soul. The devil is a liar, and the truth is not in him. He was a liar from the beginning, is what Jesus said. Right. And so we need to understand that when everything is seemingly going wrong in our life, that's the best time at all to rise up, stand up and lift our hand and say, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I brought nothing into this world, and it's a surety that I will take nothing out. But as long as I have God, 